You remember that plate that I broke and then pieced back together and glued it and then filled in the cracks with that gold spray paint? Well, my sweetheart dad is going to cut it in a nice little rectangle so I can frame it, paint some chinoiserie on it, and use it as a background for my little leopard embroidery. So cool. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So uh, while my daddy dude sets up, I'm gonna kind of show you on my Instagram. I have a little highlight of that making that plate. So yeah, I just smushed it on up and then pieced it back together like a complex puzzle. Actually, it wasn't that complex. It was basically just putting shapes together. And then I super glued it all and uh, boink, perfect. With that, I cleaned off all of the hardened super glue made sure it was nice and clean. Wow, that plate's so clean I could eat off of it. And then I just used some spray paint to paint in the cracks to make that kintsugi effect. I believe that's what it's called. And I actually found some fool's gold and put a little hole in that blanket and then powdered it on and it was too silvery. So I ended up painting over that again with the gold. But overall, I was really stoked with how it turned out. But I want to frame it, so that's why I'm here with my pops, and he's going to cut it with his tile saw so that we can fit it into a, a cute little gold frame. So, cool. Let's do that. Oh, that's just the video repeating. So, this is my cute little dad. He just got done playing basketball. And look at us. Look at us, too. We look alike. We look alike. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I don't have a cheesy mustache. I'm, I'll, I'll throw up the one picture that I have of, uh, of you. Your mustache. Uh, the mustache. Uh, no, you saw <laughs> These are actually his old overalls that he used to do tile work in. So my dad's a pretty handy man. He did tile for the longest time. And he did to put him through school. And we go. I figured a ceramic plate is kind of like tile, so this would probably work best with his little tile saw that sprays water on the blade to keep it nice and cool and lubricates it for a clean cut. I feel like I have a weird obsession of hands, uh, mainly because with working hands, I love thinking about like how many, in his case, like how many square feet of tile he's laid over his life or nails that he's hammered. Just, I think that's probably like one of my first thoughts when I see people's hands is like how much they've done with them. Oh, there's water spraying me in the face. So there you go, there's my little rant about hands. So it looked like it was gotten very well no little cracks. I thought maybe it would break on some of the seams. I would have to redo it, but nope. Looking good. A couple things I think I get from my dad is my, like, perfectionism. Things have to be perfect. And apparently, probably my humor. You take this, like, creamer, and you drop it. <laughs> you say, oh, shit. <laughs> see how you did? Yeah. And you did very... Very good. I don't know, I'm gonna slaughter it. I think it's like Kintsugi. Kintsugi. So I just helped pack everything up. Say goodbye to my pops. Love that man so very much. Thank you for helping me, Dad. And yeah, took it over to the studio. So next, I wanna show you uh, the leopard that I made. So I'm gonna go back to Instagram and look at this little highlight where I just traced it out using my phone as a light box and then drew it out, the lines out. Then again, traced it onto this tearaway backing, threw that onto a hoop with some tool, and then I just embroidered a, a little line around all those lines and tore away the tearaway backing. And from there, I could just embroider it. And it was really fun to embroider on tool. I have, I think I have like three videos where I kind of figured this out. And it kind of feels like painting, I guess, or it's more of like a loose embroidery uh, method. Sure, method. Wow, that's an awesome method you're doing, dude. Radical. Uh, yeah. What? I used a full uh, embroidery floss with the six strands to do like the filler. Then I took it down to two strands to do like the line work. I thought it looked really nice. So I wanted to frame it and put like that chinoiserie, the blue looking stuff that's like on porcelain in the background. I had just printed out that image, but I wanted to paint my own on that porcelain plate. So I traced it out and I like 
peonies. The cup, don't, oh, don't pee on my knees. I like peonies a lot, so that's what I'm gonna do. So first thing I did was kind of draw out where I thought they would go to figure out the composition. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So I just went ahead and started drawing it on there and I hated it. Don't think that looks really good, dude. That's, that's fine. Sometimes you gotta get all the uglies out. Like that hand movement. What was that hand gesture? Woo. So I decided to get a different piece of paper and start kind of drawing out all my uglies and getting my hand used to drawing. And yeah, by the second one, I was already stoked with how it was looking. So I came back and just went to work drawing it out. I also changed the leaves to look like little three little leaf guys. I wanted it to incorporate like some knives in there, just so it wasn't just flowers. Add a little bit of a just the position. Oh, what did you go to art school? Like you're saying, just a position, dude. Wow. But it started kind of feeling like it was a drawing an illustration of knives with flowers. And what I really wanted was an illustration of flowers with like just like a little Easter egg of a knife. So erased all those and started back at it with the, the old peonies. 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 Oh, I, I don't I don't know what I, I don't know why, but I really love wearing women's peonies. Honestly, I don't know the last time that I've just like sat down and drawn some stuff on paper. I really, really miss it. Something interesting to me was by the end of it, I was doing my lines very like deliberate and just like in one swoop rather than like the beginning when I was like very sketchy and had to like shake them on essentially. This one gave it more of like this like organic loose feel. And like there's like definitely like, I don't know, mess ups or like the shaking outness of my hand like came into play with the leaves and I loved it so much. So it's interesting just like within like an hour or two of drawing how different my technique turns. Turns? Changes? Sure. So I just redid all those leaves real quick and done. So now we just need to get this onto the porcelain plate. My thought was to use transfer paper and then I could just paint on the blue paint. But before I show you that, Pass Me has a little something to say. I don't really say like this. I mean, I guess maybe sometimes. Anyways. Hi. So huge, so huge, little, that's not a word. So huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You've heard me talk about Squarespace a lot because I love them. Bing. Oh, what a cute heart. Um, but I do. I've been using them for five years and I'll continue using them because they keep on coming up with new stuff. I just found out more things that they include with their service that I didn't even know existed. Like member areas. When you create a website, you can create certain pages that are only accessible to members. So you can create member exclusive content and create a cute community that way. A couple other things that I love is their point of sell. If you if you sell products in person, it automatically connects with your online store, so you don't have to really keep track of inventory and all the sales data stays in one place. Also talking about inventory management, they had their e-commerce is super cool and they have a bunch of templates to make sure that your product looks the best it can while it's online. Also, it's mobile optimized. So your website's gonna look good on whatever device people are looking at it. Um, what? Another thing is you can have unlimited products. So let's say you're crafting up something and you're like, I'm gonna craft up a thousand different things. You can do that. And then you can sell them online and offline and it'll keep track of your, your sales because it's cool. Like I said before, it keeps track of that. What? So I'm sure I've been talking, you've actually drummed up an idea of like, oh, I can make a website about this. I could sell this. Well, you can do that today for free. You can actually go to Squarespace right now and start a free trial. You can build your website up. And then when you decide to purchase something, be sure to go to squarespace.com backslash schmood to get 10% off the first purchase. Or I think you can use coupon code schmood. S-H-M-O-X-D. Schmood, sure. So yeah, go, go get yourself a website. A website makes it real. Cool. I didn't have any transfer paper on hand, so I just turned the paper over with the illustration and just used the side of the pencil to just shade the entire back of the paper. And then the idea was to flip it over, put it on top of the plate and tape it down and then trace over all those lines. And hopefully that graphite on the back will leave a little ghost image. And it did, it was very faint. 
and I rubbed it off with my palm every time I was trying to paint it, but whatever, it worked. I had forgotten what paint works best on there, so I went to a past video to find out. Ooh, I really liked how the ink looked on that porcelain, so I just went with a little brush to kind of test that out. So with those all done, I just labeled it to make sure I don't forget, because I'm known to forget, and just let it dry. And I thought I would let it dry overnight, so next day, checked on it. Hopefully that's dried enough, and uh, we'll, we'll see. Let's go check it out. So, first thing I did was just rub it with my finger to see how well it did, and the watercolor went right off. So then I used my nail, oil scratch through real easy, and the latex just peeled it right off. So then I took a nail, did another scratch test, the spray paint and enamel kind of went through, and the ink looked like it held up really well, but too bad you can't really see it. But you can see it on this porcelain. So I'm excited to see what happens there, and like, just like the glass, the watercolor, and the latex just went right off, which is weird, because when I looked up what paint works, they said latex works. So, cool. I really like the spray paint and the ink. And even though it kind of scratched off, I think that's the one that I'm going to use. When I paint. So ink. Ink's what I needed. So I got three different kinds to test out which one I wanted to use on this plate. And I really like the darker one. And so I think I'm going to use that one for the lines and then do some shading with the lighter ones. So it was alcohol ink. So the ink there on my palette kept evaporating and getting more concentrated and darker the more I went. So I just kept on having to add ink to the palette there. I also didn't want the image to like line up perfectly because if you were to like break it with the image already on there and then piece it back together, it would be very difficult to get it like per all the lines perfectly lined up. I think the best one where you can tell that I was trying to do that is there on the knife because of those straight lines. But with that, I got all of the line work done. So I just came in with that lighter stuff and started doing some shading. Oh, that's some pretty shady shading you're doing there, mister. Then I just came in with that dark again to add a couple little details within the shading to give it a little more depth. Like, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What's going on? What's the purpose? Wow, you're so deep, dude. <laughs> so with that done, I actually just came back in with the gold to fix the spots where I went over it with blue. And then I also added little goops, drips, as if it was like gooing out. I thought that looked kinda neat. And overall, I'm pretty stoked with how it turned out. I'm pretty sure when people are doing like real chinoiserie, they do it before they like fire or glaze the porcelain. I could be wrong, I should look that up. Hi, I don't know what I'm talking about. My name is Brian, Brian Pershmude. I then tested out how it's gonna look with the leopard and like the gold round frame around it. Flipped it over, added in the little back thing to hold it in place, and decided I liked it best without that gold thing. It was a shame to cover up all that work, and so I just left it as is. I think the next thing I'm going to do to this piece is actually do a double-sided patch and put this frame on hinges so you can see both sides. Alright, so be sure to like and subscribe, go ahead and hit that bell notification, and yeah, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for our patrons.